Recording in progress. Hi, guys. I have missed you. We have had like a busy couple of weeks, um, and we're just so excited to share with you guys what we've been up to this last week. So a little bit of who we are. We are Joel and Stephanie Dunn, and we've been with the company, you guys, in just a few days. It's going to be 13 years for us. I just can't believe it. Time flies. And um, I just want to share a little bit. So some of you might be brand new. So welcome. Like, I'm so excited for you and welcome you guys to the team. Some of May, you've been in two years, three years, five years. I don't know where you're at in your journey, but this Zoom is going to give you a little bit for that newbie and for people that have been in a long time on leadership. And I just remember you guys, when I got started in this business almost 13 years ago, I wasn't looking for leadership. I wasn't signing up for that. You guys, I needed extra money. I wanted to feel better about myself. I was presented with the product. It worked. So of course I had to do it. And then other people wanted it and they looked for to me for, um, they asked questions and I needed to give them answers. And soon I'm like, okay, there's, I'm leading them. I need to understand this a little bit more. So um, if, is there anybody out there? I'm going to ask this question that maybe joined and they didn't even want anything to do with leadership. If that was you, or maybe it's you right now, drop one, because that was me. I didn't want anything to do with leadership. Um, and here I am teaching and leading thousands of people. That was not what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, I think the funny thing was, is I remember Carla Burns telling Steph, you're going to talk on stage. And Steph was like, "There, I am not going to talk from stage. And here we are 13 years later and Steph has spoke from stage multiple it's times fun, it's, upon times. It's funny how God uses you, right? Um, so I knew that I was created for more. I wanted more in life and I was willing to listen to people. You know, I saw successful people and I always wondered, what do they do? Where do they get their information? What type of people are they around? So maybe that's you. So if this is you, you're looking for um, more leadership skills, maybe how to lead yourself. Maybe you want to lead a team of one to two people. You know, if that's you, drop it too, because I think there's all kinds of different levels of leadership, right? You're craving more, you want to learn more, you want to be able to do better, um, even better than the day before. And I think that that's really where I wanted to start was, um, you know, it can be overwhelming, I think. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you guys to be overwhelmed um, because that was me. I was like, man, if somebody would have just thrown up on me from day one, all about leadership, I probably would have been like, I, I don't think I can do this. And that's okay. It was something that I kind of grew into. And even at the level of leadership we're at, we're constantly growing. And that's a good thing. You don't ever want to be the smartest in the room. You always want to stretch yourself and get around people that scare you, that make you want to be stretched, right? And so this past week, we were around people that, you guys, their net worth is incredible. Like it it just made me go, oh my gosh, how, how is this possible? What do they do and who do they get around? And John Maxwell, if you have not heard of him, is one of probably one of the best, maybe you would think the best. He, he is leadership the world's legend. foremost expert on leadership. He's written over a hundred books yes, the goats, on, for yeah, sure. on leadership and gets asked to speak for presidents in front of presidents, in front of kings, you know, mm -hmm. not, not just here in the U.S. He is global mm -hmm. when it comes to leadership. And when they talk about leadership and you look it up in the dictionary, there's a picture of John's face right next to it. Yeah. If you still look in a dictionary at all, you might need to wiki it. Yeah. And I think um, something that, you know, if you're just getting started is I think with a lot of leadership, leadership is not easy. That, that is something that there's going to be times where it feels like it's really easy and things are going great and you you just feel that momentum. And there's going to be times where leadership is tough. Leadership is hard. And that he, I think he sent, sent me notes. I asked him a question over the last two years, it's been different because of COVID, right? So things have shifted and changed. And even I know for me, I'm like, oh, how do we even, you know, we haven't mm -hmm. been in person in a couple of years with him. And I wrote, it's going to take me a second to get this quote because Joel had wrote it down because I had actually asked him. Um, I think it's on my Facebook page, actually. It's probably faster than in my notes. I should have been prepared for this. Because um, no, you have other notes over here. I do. I have most of my notes. But he said, this was something I had asked him. He said, um, adversity separates the real leaders from the pretenders. 
And I was like, oh, so what does that mean? And I think for me, that was something that um, for, I mean, I guess I could say that is it's like I said, it's not always going to be easy. There's times where it's really easy. Um, and you guys know this because sometimes it's really easy to lead yourself to the gym. And there's going to be days where, you know, you are like, man, it's such a struggle for me to get to the gym today, or I blew it last week. I need to get back on track. And, um, that's, I feel like that's kind of, he answered my question in that way is you're going to get separated. I think all of you that are on the zoom right now are leaders. That's a first part of leadership is just showing up and wanting to learn and do more and be able to share that with, with your team, whether you, your definition of leadership is different than mine, that is okay too. And I think I've learned to give myself grace when it comes to this is, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I was not designed to speak in front of thousands of people, but my heart to give and do the right thing, my character, my loyalty, all of that, I think makes a good leader. Now, can I do better? Absolutely. But what are, what are the characteristics that you look at when you see people and can you do that? Absolutely. We can learn to be a leader that we see and aspire to be. And, and John is one of those, you guys, he, I really don't know how he does it, but he makes you feel like you've known him your whole entire life. And I hope that is my hope in this is that I will do that for you. When you meet me, that is my intention always is I hope that I make you feel welcome, that you can ask questions because that's how you grow. And that's how John made me feel was I could ask him anything and he was going to share that. Um, and he did, but Joel got the majority of the time you guys with, with him out in the golf course with the other leaders that he was around. And so I'm going to pick Joel's brain a little bit more because he got a lot of that time. Um, but some things that you can do that you can write down now is you know, maybe you don't have access to be physically with someone to go to an event. Um, maybe it costs a thousand dollars or something. You're like, how do I even be around these people? You can start by reading. You can start by putting in the right information in between those two ears. Listen to people that want to better you, that are going to speak life to you and not drag you down and, and pull you into a negativity pit. That's not, that's not somebody that's going to encourage you. Are you going to have bumps in the road on this journey? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that they need to tear you down and, and point. You can look for whatever you want to look at, but the type of leader that I want to be is one to be like, man, I see so much opportunity right now. Like, look where we're going, look at all the things that we're doing. Um, so think about that when you're speaking. And maybe this is a good reminder is, okay, have I been leading with excitement? Have I been leading with positivity? Have I been feeding myself? If not, you can change that and that's okay. And I, hopefully that's a good little reminder of, man, sometimes I want to go down a road of like, things aren't going my way and I need to vent to somebody and I need to do all those things, but what is it going to do? What am I going to be able to do something about it? So if I can give myself an answer through that, that's what I'm going to want to do. So I'm stuck right now. I'm not sure how I can get a distributor. Like I'm thinking these things, right? Well, there's an opportunity for me to grow. And how can I do that? And what have I been putting out there? Um, how can I do a little bit more dig in my heels and, and going, okay, maybe I need to message more. Maybe I need to do more reels. Uh, am I, you know, helping my teammates do these things? So um, I'm always constantly looking, I think, for mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. I know you have to, you want to say something you're yeah, looking, I'm, okay. I'm shaking my head. Yes. Ag agreeing with you. I'm, I'm like looking at the, I want to look at the comments too, because one of the things that, you know, I've learned over the 13 years is we're full of, of knowledge at this point. We've been in the trenches. We've been doing it. We're still in the trenches after 13 years. And some of our trainings are always like, well, what is a question that you guys would ask? Um, you know, if, if there's a leadership question, uh, I want to know and drop that in the chat because I could give you a so could Joel, a ton of information, but we also want to make sure that we're filling you guys up and adding value to you. Um, and that was one of the things that John had shared with us before was come with a question. If you're going to spend time with the leadership guru, right? The legend, it would be silly if I showed up with no question. I actually came loaded. I feel like I 
shot bullets at him. And John was just like, it's just so natural for him to just answer my questions. And I was like, man, he's so good. It's just so natural for him. But those are the things that if you're in a room with somebody that you're aspiring to be, or you see somebody, you know, just really doing a good job, what's the question that you're going to ask them? And mine was, because I'm in a different season of growth, which is great. Like I'm looking at things have just been so weird for two years that I'm like, am I the only one that feels like this? Or is it our industry that we're in? Am I crazy? I'm not crazy. John deals with network marketers, but majority of what he does is traditional business. You guys, he doesn't just do network marketing. And so I wasn't alone in feeling that way of how can I lead people? Am I just not connecting enough? Like what can I do better? And um, one of the things is asking questions and what do you guys need? And so I think uh, it made me feel a little bit better that I wasn't crazy because I want to I want to help you in all areas, but you also have to help yourself. And that was such a good reminder is um, if we give you all the information and you do nothing with it, that's, that's on you. That's not, that's not your leader. That's not, that's not us. We're going to give you the information to help you grow and, and do that kind of stuff. So I think that that was something for me on that. And then seeing a bigger vision, but I, you got to spend a little bit of time on that. So I want you yeah, to guys, a lot of what this boils down to is, is you guys come on these zooms and these trainings. And a lot of the times uh, everybody's looking for tips and tricks, mm -hmm. tips and tricks, tips and tricks, tips and tricks, tips and tricks. And when you don't get a tips and tricks, you don't know what to do for the week. And so it's one of those things that you need to stop that rabid circle of looking for tips and tricks. Uh, when John talks, he talks about principles and values. Because those things, if you get those two things right, it'll guide you on a path. Now, we all want to know the, the how to do things and, and the what to do. And that's, that's what gets everybody on these Zooms to learn is we want the what and the how. But the most important thing that you need to know and the thing that he talks about, one, is your vision for what you want and why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. He said, because if you don't have that, everything else will fall apart. I see a lot of the questions in there. Are, how do you motivate? How do you motivate? How do you motivate? How do you motivate? How do I motivate my team? How do I motivate my new DT? Well, the problem is, is you can't motivate them. Mm -hmm. Motivation comes from them. And there's nothing that you can do. You can, you can inspire them by the actions that you take. You can aspire them by the things that you've accomplished that they want to accomplish. But really motivation comes down to them. And the way that you motivate them is you have to find out why they're doing this. And one of the questions that he said is foundational for this is, do you even know what you want that will keep you in this game long past the time the motivation that you had when you joined is gone? Because motivation is, a, is just a feeling. Mm -hmm. The question is, why did you join? Do you want to get your kids out of daycare? Do you want to be a full-time stay-at-home mom? Do you want extra money to do the things like ballet, sports? You know, what is that underlying thing? Because really, this business would be perfect if we didn't have all of you. Mm -hmm. Like, guys, think about it. Business gets really hard when you put people in it because people do the things that people want to do. People don't do the things that you want them to do. So what you have to figure out is why people are doing what they're doing, because that will keep them involved and pushing towards it. Uh, we, we like to say that uh, the more uncomfortable your situation and the more that you need this, the harder of a hustler and a go-getter you are. Mm -hmm. You know, when we joined, we were standing in food lines, guys. This was our option. This was our opportunity. So when you can connect this to that for somebody, they are an unstoppable force. And the reason why is because the person that knows how will always work for the person that knows why. If you know why you're doing it, you'll figure out the how. Mm -hmm. Steph knew that she wanted to make $1,000 a month. She didn't have the option to jump on training. She just went out and did everything and anything that she could to figure out how to make that thousand dollars because that's where she was. Now, when we were sitting at dinner, Steph asked John a question because John's had the, uh, the same definition of leadership for all of eternity. 
And so one book that I would highly recommend that you get is the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. That was his first foundational book. So the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Maybe somebody can put that in the chat. And then the next one is Developing the Leader Within You 2.0. And the reason why is because you need to be able to learn to lead yourself and develop yourself before you try and lead other people. You know, for me, it's really easy to get up here and tell you all sorts of cool things to do. um, But just know that the hardest person to lead out of this entire Zoom is me. I have the hardest time getting myself to do the things, you know, that I tell others to do. Why? Because it's easier to tell you than it is to show you. That's why we constantly do the stuff and things that we tell you to do because of the fact we want to tell you from a place of actually doing it not based on theory, like, oh, we heard somebody over here is doing it. You should do it too and see what happens. No, we we actually do it along with you. So when Steph asked him what his definition was, he said, well, my definition's always been the same. Leadership is influence. And then the conversation was, well, maybe I need to update that a little bit because of the fact that now in day and age of social media, everybody thinks influencer, not leader. Mm -hmm. So if leadership is influence, well, now all of a sudden you got a bunch of influencers out there, which we all, I mean, raise your hand if you know an influencer on Instagram or follow an influencer on Instagram. Do you think they're leading anything? They're not a leader. They are a marketer. The big difference. So his whole thing was being in leadership and the definition of leadership is influencing those around you for a greater purpose and good for themselves without you may not have ever attained. So the person that you're leading needs you to help guide them to a point above and beyond where they are that without your help, they never would have reached before. And I I had this written down because this was uh, one of the thoughts that I had, because it was almost like a, uh, you know, in a short summary, what do, you, what do you say you do as a leader? And so I put this down. It says, my intention is to serve people and help them lead a better life and become the best versions of themselves they can be. That's the thought process that you want to have as a leader. So that was uh, one of the, one of the many. discussions that we had at dinner. You know, I think even reading some of your questions, which by the way, they're amazing questions. And I think um, more people actually have these. I feel like there's a lot of common questions that are being, well, you move past my, um, you know, how do you keep people inspired as well as yourself? Um, the motivation, all those things. And a lot of it comes down to our attitude. Like, you know, how do we handle situations? Do we react or do we look at things and go, oh, well, that wasn't exactly what I expected, but I can work around that. Or I see it, I got to look at it a different way. And at first, if you've never practiced that, you know, um, it's going to feel weird and it's okay, but I'm going to challenge you guys to do that. Like I said, you know, maybe, you know, I'm reading some of these questions, like how do I get more distributors? How do I get more customers? A lot of it, I could look at it and go, it's your attitude. What are you thinking? When you're doing a post, when you're reaching out, are you excited that you get the opportunity to help people and change their life? We have an amazing opportunity here, you guys, that um, is like no other. Like we're talking to traditional business owners and one of them did not even understand um, network marketing. He's like, you you don't have the product. Like it gets shipped for you. Like they house it and you just make money. Like it was was like, I'm doing this all wrong. What is going on? And so, you know, how we are one of the few that we can make the most millionaires in this industry for $150 sign up, you guys. Like, I am so grateful I don't have to house all the product, figure all that out. We have the incredible product that gets shipped right to them. But one of the thing is, is do you believe it? Do you believe what you have your hands on can help change your life? If not, take the products because that's where I started. I love the products. I fell in love with that. That got excitement, right? And people can't deny that. When they see you doing those things, they're like, I want to be around her. Like, is it somebody on your social media that you want to be around? And 
that's a good, another checkpoint of like, I need to, I need to evaluate. And John does this multiple times throughout the year as a leader, he evaluates, where is he at? How can I do better? Uh, what worked so I can continue that? And where can I add and, and do better? And so I think um, this is a great time of year to kind of do that. We kind of, you know, there's seasons and different times of when we can give you the leadership and when it's like, sometimes we're like, we need to just pour on the gas right now and just hone in. But then there's going to be times where you just need to recheck your mindset and get that right. And when you're on fire for things, people will start to come your way. Customers come your way. Distributors come your way. Uh, you're creating that momentum. And naturally what happens is when those customers and distributors come in, they want to follow you. They want to go, well, okay, what are you taking? You're a leader. You're telling them what to do, right? Well, what are you taking? I want to do what you're taking because you look amazing. Whatever you're doing, you're always smiling. You're always having a good time. Like people ask me all the time, well, what do you take? And I don't take all just it works products, you guys. I, I love sharing that. Like, here's my passion. Here's some of the things that I cannot live without. But then here's a few other things. But I would I would hands down like greens, you know, some collagen, all of those things. Like I've got my collagen tonight. So, you know, what are those things? What gets you excited? Um, because people are attracted to that. If these new products aren't getting you excited, you might as well just log off oh right gosh, now. I'm just so saying. excited. I'm so excited about that. And again, it's something that maybe you came from a background you're, where you weren't spoken positive words over your life. Um, and again, you can change that. You can change the direction of how you want to be. And I truly believe that with you guys on this Zoom tonight, or if you're watching the replay, like you are mentally ready to have more. And I think I've done this before, like hands out, everybody, you can stop writing for just one second and just hands out and um, feel that. Can you feel your energy shift? Can you feel that people coming into your life, that good energy, those distributors coming in, those customers coming in? And, you know, like I, I can change everything about the way I feel by just hands up, being excited putting a good post out and just start starting out. Yeah. I don't know. Who is this? T I think it's Tiana. I see her. She's like up in this corner, like bring it on. Like I'm going to be there. So I see that through here. Now imagine if you started your zooms like that or your trainings with new people, what, what energy would you bring and how would their mind start, start to shift? And so you're going to start speaking that over them. You're going to get a customer. I'm going to help you guys go, go through that. And you're already leading. And I think that for me, looking back, mm -hmm. I didn't realize I was leading. Now I didn't sign up to be a leader, but that's an easy thing to do is to inspire people to want more for them, to help them. And I think, you know, my leader, my definition of leadership is very different than yours. And I always thought, oh man, leaders are so perfect. I felt like they were like PowerPoint. This is how they had to be. And uh, I'm just so grateful here. We can be who we want to be. And we're just the we, hot mess express over we, here. We cheer, we cheer each other on for that. So, you know, maybe you're like us. Life was hard. You were going through bankruptcy. You know, I've gone through cancer. Uh, my dad was just in the hospital again, you guys. I lost my mom last year. Like one thing after the next, but how do I choose to look at that? And how can I learn and, and help people? I have a story to connect with so many different people because of, the I don't I don't even want to say they're bad times because mm -hmm. there are times that that's when I grow and become a better version of me and so if that's you if you're going through a time where you're like why me why is everything hitting me like I just need to know I just want to sign up a customer or distributor and all this is coming at me take a minute hands up thank you Lord for all of that and we're gonna move forward and this is where we're gonna go and we're gonna be able to connect so if you have a story that you're going through right now, be loud about that. Like I, I can just see Rachel Jones is always on and I love her to pieces. Um, and I see her and Aldine and I, I'm so jealous. I don't know. I'm sure Ashley Pfluger's on and they were at a women's conference and I was supposed to be there. Ashley was drilling me so hard to get there. We had prior with John Maxwell, but Rachel said she blew it. I saw it on her, on her social media. She was very like open about her story of like, she's human and she didn't eat the best. And she felt this way. And, you know, she could have went down this path of like, man, I shouldn't be posting right now. I just don't feel like it. Her attitude could be completely different, but she used something that could bring people down and flipped it around. And was like, Hey guys, I know there's gotta be other people out there. Mamas like me that blow it. It's okay. And we're going to get back up. 
and people want that. They want to see that. So um, at any time, you get to decide that. So those are some of the things that, um, for me, when I hear leadership, when I think of that word, my first reaction is attitude. Is That is the easiest thing that I think that if I were to give you a tip or if John was, his attitude, he's smiling, he's, you know, hugs on you, you're my friend, what can I do for you? And he may not do anything for me, but just to say, hey, what can I do for you? That's it. I just become like a better person. Like it makes me want to go do more for other people and, and just be there for you guys. So, um, that is a, I feel like there's so much, but I want you guys to know this, that, you know, how do we get paid in this business? Of course it's, you guys all want to know, how do we sign distributors? How do we sign customers? But it's, um, really a third down the way. We have to start talking about a little bit leaders about leadership, uh, personal development, you know, of course, gathering customers and distributors and then training. So we need to really start incorporating all three of those um, together so that you guys can understand because you may not be going through a hard time or maybe you're leading yourself and you've got a good amount of people and you're leading them, but then there's somebody that comes in and they need help and it's trying and they, and they may start to drag you down because they're asking negative questions. Like I've had that before, but how are you going to handle that as a leader and still continue to move forward with the, the momentum of the other people? So you're always going to have to figure out, I think some of that. Yeah, guys, here, here's the, the truest statement that I can make about this business. You are where you're at as a leader and your team is where it is at based on the level at which you are able to lead. So your team is never going to outgrow your capacity to lead. So if you want a bigger team, you need to develop yourself, whether it's personal development or leadership development, which I would do both, mm -hmm. so that you grow so that you can lead people along. Because if you have nothing to offer people, people don't follow you because truly leaders have followers. If a leader doesn't have followers, they're just a person going on a walk. And one of the interesting things that, that John said is, you know, I saw somebody in here ask about vision and, and leaders do cast vision, but he said, good leaders take it a step further. further. They ask for a commitment. Mm. They ask who's in and who's out. I think that's a question. Who's in on this mm -hmm. Zoom? Drop a one if you're if you're in. Like everybody should be in. And and the reason why is because commitments gotta ask them to put skin in the game. Because once they have skin in the game, they're more likely. So if you just had somebody sign up and they kind of ghosted you, they really didn't have skin in the game. I think they joined so that they could ghost you so you'd stop talking to them. That that's happened, I don't know how many times to us. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, is you need to get that commitment and get the skin in the game so that you know who you're running with. If you get excuses or reasons why they can't commit or why they can't be in, then don't spend your hard-earned time with them because time is the one thing that you can never get back. Mm. So if you know who's committed, you know who to spend time with. And commitment always produces results. Why? Because you're working together, which produces results, which causes you to give validation to the fact that they're actually working and committed. Again, you have somebody that says they're committed, and yet when you follow up with them, they've posted zero host to posts. They haven't called a single person in their phone. You say, show me your messenger, and their messenger is nothing but memes. Then you know that they're all talk and no walk. So that's when you take their talk and you walk because you don't have time for them to waste your precious time because your time is precious. You can invite them to things like this. That's why group trainings are so important because of the fact that it multiplies your time. I mean, we've got us doing, you know, 45 minutes of a, of a conversation with you, but think about that. It's multiplied based on the number of people that are listening to this right now. And then you're going to take this and you're going to share it with your team. So what kind of multiplication takes place on that? That's why this kind of stuff is so important. Well, and you guys, I think 
right now too, this is so interesting to me when people are talking about like vision and it's no secret that it works has done a huge change. Right. And I I'm so thrilled about it, but it's weird. And you know, it's strange and it's like, Oh my gosh, all the people, you know, if you've been in, if you're new, you have no idea. So that's okay. But for the ones that have been in and you feel like, I don't even know. Well, social media, it's like, where do we start getting our information? They're doing things as fast as they can to give us the biggest picture, the vision of where they're going. Um, And I think that's where I feel like over the last year, a lot of that was like, well, what's going on? And I, I feel so confident in knowing that I love Meredith. I love Doug. Doug is contagious. He's like just a ball of energy. Like he's got his, he's just like, a goofy, just, but excited because he sees so much opportunity for you, for us to make incredible amounts of, you know, not only helping people lose weight, get healthy, do all the things, but also to make a lot of money along the way. And, but it doesn't just fall off the tree. You still got to do the work. You got to have that right attitude of knowing I'm going to go out and help people. And how do we get paid? We get paid by enrolling loyal customers and enrolling distributors. And the more that we do that, the more that we get paid and, and casting that vision and working alongside of them and getting them on Zooms and trainings and learning. Okay, you might not know this, but you're a leader. You joined and you're leading yourself. And how can we help that? I think, you know, Joel, when I think about it, one of the questions is, is how, do I, how do I get more people to want to lead? Does anybody have that question ever? Like, you know, you know, like I know, okay, I, I'm going to show up. Like I'm always going to show up. I have for 13 years, whether you guys want to or not, I don't care. I'm going to be here. So um, you may think that too. Like, man, I show up all the time. Why isn't my team show up? Um, and you would think after 13 years, I'd have some people, but I can tell you this, that um, not everybody that I promoted to with ambassadors here, I've had leaders, which their title says leader, but they, in reality are not a leader. They were here for a season, whether that was to teach me something, um, which is fine. Or maybe that was a season for their life. Like it was a year or two years and they needed to go do something else. I don't really know what that is, but you're not alone in feeling that way. And so if you are showing up, don't ever quit on yourself. That is one thing that I am so grateful to say that I'm probably, and I even said this to a lot of the people there, I am very loyal. Like it's an easy thing to step down in a way, um, but I'm just so passionate because I think back and wish somebody would have taken me aside and showed me this so much sooner. I was hungry. I knew I was a worker. Um, didn't want the leadership role because I didn't know what that meant. I thought it was different, but I knew I'm not going to quit on people. I'm not going to quit on you guys. You would quit on me before I would quit on you. And so that's the type of person I want you to be is the person that you would never, you would never quit on who has kids. You would never quit on them. So when you're in those moments of like feeling like you're going to give up because you're not, nobody's following me yet. You know, all those moments. If you have the kids or borrow somebody's kids, you can look them in their eyes and you know, I can't give up or look in your dog's eyes. Like I could look at my co my doggy and say, like, there's look, no way. Look at your team the way that your dog looks at looking you. Looking at somebody that you truly care about and go, you wouldn't give up on them and they they probably wouldn't give up on you. And so um, having that attitude again, coming down to the attitude of like, this is where I'm going. This is where I'm going to do. Am I going to have tough times? Absolutely. Are we going to have times where like, Things are rolling in, you guys. It's on fire. Absolutely. So we're going to have that attitude of like, okay, after this Zoom, we got it all in. And I want you guys to go out because you're so fired up to be able to feel like I can do anything. I can help people. I can get customers. I can do the things. Uh, one of the things that John said about loyalty, he goes, loyalty is a combination of love and faithfulness. Oh, you didn't tell me that. Yeah. So you just got to hear that one. All right. That was, that was in my, that was in my, my notes. He was keeping it. He had so much. And he, um, and he said, good. you know, we, we're talking about the, the power and proximity is the thing that you have to think about too, is are the people that you are around powering mm -hmm. you up or are they draining your battery? Mm -hmm. If they're draining your battery, 
you need to make sure that you have another group that you're around that fills you up. Because think about it, guys, our organization is so large that it's bound to happen that we're just going to have those energy vampires. It, it, the law of large numbers dictates that we're going to have them. So you have to have that special group. Mm -hmm. Who is your special group that you go to to get filled up? And if you don't have that, guys, there's podcasts, there's uh, worship albums there. I mean, there's music you can listen to. There are things that you can plug into to get that energy back. Mm -hmm. Find out what that is and make sure that you're going to it weekly because that power is what, again, if you had a bad day, and this is the thing that John says all the time, there are never two consecutive good days in a leader's life. So when you get to leadership, good luck. That's where we're at because you're dealing with people and not everybody's going to be on the same track at the same day. Mm -hmm. So if you have two consecutive good days, take that as momentum and run mm -hmm. because that's when you'll accomplish additional things that you otherwise wouldn't accomplish. So when you are around those people, get charged up and then go take that energy and go pour it into your team. Kind of like us. We were gone, we, we got refueled and refreshed, and we couldn't wait to get back and do this Zoom to tell you all of the amazing leadership things that we learned and we had questions about and we talked about so that we could help take you to that next level. Um, one of the other things too, you guys, is be intentional with that time, with where you're pouring into who you're pouring into and even in your, in yourself. And I think that was one of the things too, that hearing other um, business owners um, that were there, some of those questions are, you know, well, I'm, I'm busy. Like we're all going to be busy. It doesn't matter. And so John's like, you have to be intentional. You absolutely need to be intentional with that. And so have you ever just sat down and designed your life? Like, what does that look like? And it sounds crazy because I thought Joel was crazy when he was doing this. Even before we got network marketing, he was writing down what his life looked like, kind of that dream board, right? And he was so intentional about the books that he was reading um, and not just reading them, but reading them and applying them. And that flows out of Joel onto me, which I wasn't even understanding at the time because I thought he's weird and didn't realize all of that was preparing us for our future of, I believed if there was a challenge, I looked at things differently because of what was coming out of his mouth. And so he was very intentional with, with his time. So I'm very intentional of where every year you guys will see us go to different events that are not at works. And I want to be a better mom, a better wife, a better business owner, just better all around human. And so, you know, that is something that take time to go, how can I be intentional? Because it's going to fill, it's going to fill you up. I think a lot of us feel guilty if we take away time from work, you know, pouring in, doing all those things, but it's needed and it's okay. Now I wouldn't recommend taking off six months or something. Cause right. How you can't take six months off of work, but you can be very intentional with that time and what you want to do with it and who you're listening to and what you want to listen um, and where you're going. And I think that that, that overall arching weekend for me was just seeing that, that I need to be very intentional. Mm -hmm. uh, the last, last thing that I'll say, and then Steph can finish off with whatever she has to say is he said, when you start doing the things that a leader does, you will start getting the things that leaders have. And he said, don't confuse the perks of leadership as leadership. Mm -hmm. Most people want to get to leadership because they see the things that leaders have. And that's not because they're a leader. That's an outpouring of the success from the actions that they have taken and done time and time and time again. And the results have just shown up at the point that you think that they're a leader. That, yeah, that makes me go. I asked this question, you know, there's two different, I think there's two different camps right now. There's there's hard workers and there's hustlers and there pe there's people that work really hard because they know that's what it's going to take and they're going to do whatever it takes to get to where they want to be. And then there's people that think you don't need to work hard. I asked John that question. I was like, you know, I'm just sick of seeing people saying it's easy here. 
it is not easy anywhere. Like if, if something is worth it, it's not going to be easy. And so I said, I don't, I don't know if that's just the world that we're in right now, where it's like, you don't need to show up. It's easy when you have a hundred million dollars in your bank account and you can say, you don't need to work hard. They've already done all of that hard work to get them there where they want to be. They're just not talking about their, they're trying to sell on something else. And I think that's exactly where I was so frustrated. Like John was probably like, what has gotten into Stephanie? Because I, we're, yeah. we've become friends over the years. And so, you know, uh, we can text and we can do some of those things, but I think he could just see me really heated up because I believe you create your own luck. It just doesn't happen. And um, so I, I'm kind of a mama bear on some things because I'm like, no, I didn't come to it works with people with leadership skills, with anything other than I knew I wanted to help people. The product worked and you get paid by signing customers and distributors. And how many people can I help as fast as I, as I can, because why didn't anybody else share that with me? I didn't have any special gifts or talents or something that when I got started. And I love that. I love that part of our story because that's how leaders came into this business. A lot of the people that came in at works didn't have this, whatever. It just, it wasn't easy, mm -hmm. I think. And so I get so excited when I, when I see that because you have an opportunity to do exactly what I did. You know, you don't see all of the, uh, late nights or frustrations with charts are like, I told you guys to get an order in before 1 a.m. Like I'm going to bed at 9 p.m. Eastern on the last day of the month because you know the same, the end of the month happens. Like, so, you know, all of that stuff, crazy stuff happens to me now. I love it. I wouldn't give it up because a lot of you are like, I want that. I want my team to be texting me at 1 a.m. Like I got to get this last order in or whatever. But, you know, all of those sacrifices that I've done, it wasn't luck. It was a choice. And I think, thank you, Lord, that we all have a choice and that we all get to do that. You can be in a frustration mode in a good, I get frustrated in a good way. Um, but I also know no matter what I do or where I go, I have to work. It's not just going to happen. Have we created a little bit easier luck mm -hmm. about choosing the right people to be around? That's lessons learned over the years. That's asking the questions to the leaders. That's how can I do better? So newbies, if you're like, holy smokes, this is a really hard Zoom. I didn't know I was getting thrown into this. I wish somebody would have had conversations with me like this earlier. So I could have grew a little bit faster. And so uh, maybe that this was Zoom was for you for that purpose. If I could cut off three years of your journey by <laughs> yes, this Zoom, yes. wouldn't you want that? Yes. Just go back and re-listen to the replay of this and it'll catch you up and you'll you'll skip 36 months of the crap that I had to go through to learn this. Yeah. And um, and so you know, we give this stuff to you guys free. We don't charge, we don't do any of that. We do it because we truly love people and what? And, and I'm going to add on to that because that goes right into exactly what John said. He said, you know, if, if you want to increase your standard of living, you need to first start by increasing your standard of giving mm. because the people that give the most end up receiving the most. It's just how God's law works. You can't out give the one that makes everything. So if you are intentional with what you're giving, your time, your energy, your talent, and you're paying it forward into your team, it will begin to pay dividends above and beyond what you've paid. I think too, guys, don't beat yourself up if you haven't been maybe doing the things that you feel like the devil wants to come in and, and put you in a lack, right? And think that, oh man, you know, I'm really not a good leader. It, the devil loves to creep in my head all the time and be like, yep, you're just not a good leader. You're not one of those PowerPoint people. Like, you know, all of those things that I could think about myself um, because it just happens. We're human, right? Uh, I don't want you to stay in that way. I want you to go, man, maybe I need to just text somebody and tell them good job. Or, you know, just start there because I think we're the hardest on ourselves when it comes to leadership, when it comes to anything that we choose to do. So I want you guys to understand um, it's normal and that you're not alone and that we can, like I said, we can grow from that. We can become better every single day. That's my, my hope for this zoom is 
it's not always about, Hey, what host supposed is working. Um, because when you have your attitude, right. When you know your why, when you know what, what you want, those things are going to start to happen. I, I didn't, there was no such thing as host supposed when I joined, we didn't have Facebook. I didn't really know what in the world I was doing. I was talking to complete strangers. I see how they're on. So she knows my whole thing going up, to, going up to a stranger and be like, have you tried that crazy rap thing? That is scary, you guys. Sending a host to post is not scary. So um, I just, I knew I wanted, I wanted more and I was helping people because I was feeling good about myself. So, you know, sometimes all these Zooms are, um, which I love because I'm a red personality. Just give me the meat, tell me what to do and I'm going to go do it. So I do love those, but I also know that there's time to just check yourself, understand that you were made for more that you're going to do more because you get to choose, choose those things. And, you know, in seasons of your business, um, there's going to be people that may start to creep in your head that think the ship is sinking. Um, and when other people think things like that, I'm like, that's not how I'm thinking. I see a lot of opportunity right now. Like what are you, what? So again, when you have that like attitude of like, things are really going good. I don't look at something that may not be going right. I'm like, well, I don't know if it's not because I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for like, holy cow. I wish I would have kept track of all of my loyal customers since the day I started because of all these new products that they didn't even know about. They knew about a wrap defining gel fat fighter. That's what they knew about. 13 years later, we have skinny hydrate. We have power hydrate. We have stressless gummies. We have coffee. We have all of these things that I'm like, I should have done better at keeping track of my customers and having better communication because I suck at retention. So I'm getting better. <laughs> so, you know, all of these, all of these things are, it's just going to be part of it. So how, getting your attitude, right. Wanting to be a better person, which in turn people follow that. And that's when you, when you don't realize you're a leader. So whether you like it or not, you're on the zoom, you're a leader. Um, you have good character, you're loyal you love people, you want to help people and that shines darkness out. And that's what I, that's what I want. I think more than anything is to be able to go, yeah, I've had bad days. It's not always easy. You guys, there's times where I want to give up and it's hard. Um, or Cal, can I just kick back and just do retire? Um, and I was reminded this weekend, like, there's times where you're tired, of course. It's, it's hard to think of the word retirement around John when he is uh, 75 years old and it still has like 20 more books that he wants to write in 13 different countries that he wants to see leadership. Like, I want to cry, you guys, because it's how, why would I stop? Why would I stop helping you? Like, what does that do for me? That is selfish. That is just... I don't ever want to say the word retirement again, because it was a wake up call for me of John wants to keep doing this long after he's alive. He wants people to remember that. And I, I'm like, man, his dying breath, he's going to be helping people, right? He's um, impacted. Cal, I didn't think I would get emotional, but um, you don't sometimes realize what you need until you're around somebody that you see they don't need to do this. They just want to live a life of significance and to add value to people and to make them feel good and have them believe that they can do and be anything they want to do. And that is like priceless, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I want you guys to know he would do anything for us, which means you get John Maxwell at your fingertips whenever you want. I think you know, if I wanted to text him right now, although he's probably speaking or something right now, he's got a kind of a full plate, but having access to us also gives you access to people that maybe you never would have met before. Um, and I hope that we can do that with other people that we've met is giving you some belief, borrow our belief, our, our love, whatever you need to, but I'm just so grateful that we've taken chances um, to be able to give a fraction. I just want to like a slip his pinky. I don't even care. Like, I want to be able to be like a pinky of what John Maxwell has done. And he didn't go set out I don't, to do that. And the other cool thing you guys is he didn't start doing this till he was in his what forties. He didn't, he didn't start his leadership journey until he was 44. That's when he left pastoring to go into the business world as leadership. 
So that was another thing is you're never too old to change and to, to go and do what you were created to do. So, um, God, I didn't know I was going down that path, but anyway, this is how much I love you guys and appreciate you all for staying on for, you know, 45 minutes when I try to really make this 30 minute window. Um, but there's just so much more to come that I know that some of the leaders here that have been around, like, right. I feel like I just see Rachel, like she's always, I don't know how she's always on my front page, but she always is like, I don't know how you do it, Rachel. You got like a magic wand or whatever, but you know, she's one that's not going to quit on you either. And so I love having conversations with her and just knowing, you know, me and Joel have done so many different leadership stuff that we want to make sure that you guys have access to that. So if you're like, all right, I'm really ready for more. I would say global leadership summit. If you don't know what that is, write that down. And that is something that happens every August and you can watch it online. There's been years that we've had to watch it online and we go in person. There's live to lead. That's another one that's in October and it doesn't happen to fall on, thankfully on the, on the, the trip, but there's a lot of things that we want to give you guys and be around. And so leaders will show up. So this is the year that um, we're working on like big, and you guys, I don't get, I don't get money for ticket sales or anything like that. I don't want you guys to think that that's not who I am I, at all. I just want you guys to get as much as you can, but those are some things that if you're like, okay, I want to invest in myself. Those are some things that I would absolutely do. Um, because you're going to have, whether you stay with it works or not, you're going to have things that you need to grow from and learn from. And these are some of those things that I think I would definitely do anything else. I feel like I vomited. I'm sorry, you guys. I feel like I vomited on you. you and I was like, you? just did anybody get anything from this zoom please let me let there be a yes because if i helped one person i did my job if, if not <laughs> go back and watch the replay on like one and a half speed i'm sure you'll find some gold in there somewhere yeah but um again you know next week i'll give you the how to's i promise you because there's a lot of people out there crushing it just killing it with customers and distributors uh we're tracking some numbers right now and so we're seeing this happening which I was like, that's interesting this time of the year. So we want to make sure that you guys hear from some people that have made that decision to make June just a huge, massive month. So I know you guys will be excited for that, but I'm going to have Joel close us out in prayer and uh, be ready for next, next week as well. But I do just love you guys. Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing group of leaders. I just ask that you pour out overflowing blessing on them so that they can pour out into others and change the lives around you. You've called them to amazing things and you've brought them to this amazing company because this company has the opportunity to change the lives of those that they love. Just ask that you would give them courage to go out and do the things that you've called them to do, take action and move themselves forward to places that you have called them to be, God. Help them to have an amazing rest of their week and do amazing things for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, guys, have an amazing week and we'll see you next Monday. See Bye, guys. guys.